What if I told you John Witherspoon wasn't almost in Boomerang? And what if I told you the same goes for his role as granddad on the Boondocks? When you look at Witherspoon's career, he was known for a specific role by playing a father figure in his most talked about work. While some actors shy away from the phrase typecast, Witherspoon, however, made it his strength. From 1987 up until his passing, Witherspoon played a series of father figure roles which would forever mark him in comedy history. For some, he was more than a comedian. He was the dad you wanted to have. Funny, unafraid to make a fool of himself, but at the end of the day, you never had to question his love. As it turns out, the stand-up comedian was just like many at the start of his career, but a few pivotal roles would identify him as Black America's dad, a position that even rivaled Cosby's style of fatherhood. But as it turns out, the roles that helped make his career almost didn't happen, thus Witherspoon, as we now know, was close to not existing. Here's why John Witherspoon almost didn't become America's favorite dad. John Witherspoon, born John Witherspoon, before changing his last name, was one of 11 siblings who, before comedy, wanted to model. Witherspoon would find himself eventually giving stand-up a try when he joined an acting school in his hometown. I'm from Detroit. My brother, he ran a theater group. So he would go Thursday and Fridays and do plays. I said, boy, that looks very interesting. I go see him perform and I say, wow, I want to be an actor. So I looked into the yellow pages and found an acting school and applied. And the guy gave me some private lessons. And every year they would put on a show, a comedy show. He'd say, I want you to do something funny. Well, they had me doing Shakespeare and I was in a Shakespeare group. Oh my God, I was tearing up Shakespeare. You're not supposed to laugh at Othello, but I had them cracking up. I said, I don't know anything about comedy. He said, look, I want you on the show. So I thought of something funny and stole the show. I said, man, wait a minute, I can be a comic. So that's how I got to stand up. Years later, Witherspoon would drive from Detroit to Las Vegas and finally to Los Angeles for a visit to the Comedy Store. And that's when his career began to gain traction in Hollywood. His time at the Comedy Store would connect him with Paul Mooney, who ended up casting Witherspoon and others in the short-lived series, The Richard Pryor Show, starring comedy superstar Richard Pryor. The show would be Witherspoon's first official credit, according to IMDb. The show would end abruptly, however, after Pryor decided to walk away due to censorship from the network after just four episodes were produced. It was in 1987 that Witherspoon would begin building his comedy legacy as one of America's most loved dads. At one point, according to the Census Bureau, more than one-third of all black children in the United States under the age of 18 live with unmarried mothers. 38.7% actually live with both parents. The statistics alone reflect the lack of fatherhood in homes of black youth. The effects of fatherless homes can serve as the reason why black youth oftentimes gravitate towards different activities, both good and bad, or why this same group of youth gravitate towards the wrong crowds or even the wrong types of father figures. When it comes to entertainment, this and all has created a strong desire for a black family to see images of fatherhood they can connect with. According to Witherspoon in an interview with the AV Club, while working as a comedian and MC at the Comedy Store, a young Robert Townsend would approach him to play his earliest father-like role as Mr. Jones for a film called Hollywood Shuffle. Well, you know, Robert Townsend was at the Comedy Store also. Robert Townsend had written his movie and it wasn't long enough so they had to go back and shoot some more scenes. They said, you only have 50 minutes. A movie has to be at least 90 minutes. So that's 40 more pages. So he came to the comedy store and he started looking at us. He was a comic himself there. So he said, look, I want you to be in this movie. I want you to be Mr. Jones. I want you to run this rinky dinky hot dog stand. So now you got us ad-libbing again, see? You got all the people in the movie, all the actors, Keenan Wayans, all the Wayans brothers, they were all in there and all the people from the comedy store who were comics. This would be the first time Witherspoon was put in front of a large audience and the role would display him as a father-like figure who provided guidance for Townsend's character. Whether it was for his own selfish reasons, Mr. Jones looked to advise Townsend's character with making the right decisions. The dialogue between Mr. Jones and Townsend's Bobby reflected that of what a father would tell his child about taking over the family business instead of venturing out on their own. It's just that acting allows me to be creative. Bobby, you can create here. Hollywood Shuffle will become one of Witherspoon's most talked about roles, showcasing his early ability to ad-lib and add lines to scripts with phrases like whole cake and hoes gotta eat too. It would be in 1990 after several roles that Witherspoon would be back on camera 
as a father-like figure, and this time it became clear that he found his lane. For the film House Party, Witherspoon would play Mr. Strickland, a grumpy neighbor who wasn't a fan of loud music that disturbed his peace. For the role Reginald Hudlin, like Robert Townsend did prior, would come across Witherspoon at the comedy store in Los Angeles. The movie had been ongoing for a while, and he said, when the kids are having this party, we need somebody to holler out at the window at them. And he said, Spoon, when you go up there and you holler out out the window, as long as you holler at the kids, I'm going to keep the camera on you. I said, really? So I went into my dressing room and wrote down some ideas, and I had them in my back pocket. When I saw the kids coming out, I said, hey, stop making all that noise. Hey, I paid $15,000 for this house, and I ain't paying that kind of money to hear all this noise. Who's over there? Who's throwing that party? Who's giving a public enema? Who's giving a public enema? What's a public enema? I talked and talked, and at this time, I didn't even have my rent money. According to Witherspoon, a backstory to the role was that originally he wasn't supposed to have as much camera time that he would later get. As a way to guarantee him a bit more money for the role, he would then improvise a few lines of him yelling at his wife in the house, making the production team shoot inside shots of Mr. and Miss Strickland, played by actress B.B. Drake. So what I did was, it was a smart move. I looked back into the window and talked to my wife. So that means they gotta shoot an interior scene with me and my wife. That wasn't even in the script, see? So I get some more money to pay my rent. So that worked out real well. I hollered at the kids and that became one of the highlights of the whole movie. And from the look of things, Witherspoon's lane was now solidified. A year later, Eddie Murphy and his prime would team up with Hudlin for the film Boomerang and Witherspoon would once again prove that he was the go-to black dad. According to the backstory, however, Witherspoon's role as Mr. Jackson almost didn't happen. When I got on Boomerang, Eddie Murphy requested me after the movie was done. He said Witherspoon would be funny to be Dave and Alan Greer's father. They didn't have a script for me at all. Since the film was complete before Witherspoon's addition as Mr. Jackson, Paramount felt that the film had reached its budget and didn't want to add in Witherspoon. Eddie Murphy, on the other hand, would express that he wouldn't continue unless they added Witherspoon as David Allegra's father, Mr. Jackson. The scene would once again pair Witherspoon with actress B.B. Drake. On screen, Witherspoon would display what many felt was authentic compared to Greer's character, who appeared to want to separate from his upbringing. Upon arrival, Witherspoon would find out that he had no lines and was requested to do what he did best, make something funny on the spot. I said, what? There's no script? And they told me to just think of something. You come in a room. You come in a house. You're David Allen Greer's father. And you've got to go think about it. So they sent me to the wardrobe department to pick out an outfit. I picked out the mushroom jacket, the mushroom shirt, the mushroom belt, and I had mushroom socks on. But they didn't show that part. And the director said, okay, Spoon, people from Paramount are here. And they're kind of mad. So you got to make this funny. So what are you going to do? I said, when I come into the door to say hello, to come into the dinner, I want you to ask me, how do I pick my clothes? Have somebody ask me, how do I pick my clothes? And that's how I got my, you got to coordinate. You got to coordinate. For the next several years, Witherspoon would appear in several other shows and films as a black father-like figure, like when he played Uncle Junior on Martin in 1993 and Mr. Augustus Adams in 1994 on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It was in 1995 that Witherspoon's father role would reach new heights. At the time, rapper Ice Cube was looking to get his hands into film, and along with friend DJ Pooh would come up with the film Friday. Cube would also star in the comedy and was in search of his dad for the film. In 2019, at Witherspoon's funeral, Cube would explain why he wanted Witherspoon to play his dad in the franchise. Robert Townsend used to do an HBO show, he would do all these skits, and I saw John Witherspoon in one of his skits. He had one line, and I knew I wanted him to be my father in Friday. His one line was, why the hell they not playing no Al Green in here? The reason I wanted him to be my father in that movie was because he reminded me of my real father. But my real father isn't as funny. I knew if we got John Witherspoon in the movie, the movie would be funny no matter who else we got in it. We knew we had an anchor. Upon its release, Friday would become a cult comedy, landing in the number two spot at the box office and making $6.5 million in its opening weekend. At this time, things were changing. Friday and films before it began taking images of the hood and making them digestible for mainstream audiences. 
which meant Cosby's depiction of black fatherhood, will get another perspective. Before this, we learned about black fatherhoods in the upper part of the town, like Cliff Huxtable, but what about the dad in the hood raising their kids? John Witherspoon would fill that void. That same year when Friday would get released, Witherspoon would land another notable role as a black father. Then rising act Sean and Marlon Wayans would land an opportunity with having a pilot to take the NBC. Once again, however, Witherspoon originally wasn't tied to the project. According to Sean Wayans, the network wanted Danny Glover as Pops in the Wayans Brothers. They wanted us to hire a different dad. Actually, they wanted us to hire Danny Glover, but we couldn't see him on there telling me and Marlon, get in here, I'm getting too old for this mess. Eventually, however, the Wayans Brothers would find a home at the WB and Witherspoon would play John Pops Williams for five seasons. The show would end up becoming one of Witherspoon's most lucrative roles. For the next several years, Witherspoon would continue with his signature style. Now, if his role a part of the Friday franchise and the Wayans Brothers wasn't enough to solidify him as America's new dad, in 2005, an animated series would do the job. In 2005, Reginald Hudlin would team up with cartoonist and writer Aaron Magruder for Magruder's TV version of his popular comic strip, The Boondocks. The show tells the story of a grandfather in the suburbs with his two grandsons, and Hudlin would know exactly who he wanted as the character of Granddad. So Reggie called me and said, man, oh my God, there's a Granddad part I want you to play. I said, what is it? He said, it's a cartoon. I said, a cartoon? I played some cartoons before, but I only played three to four days on a cartoon. He said, well, I want you to be the granddad on this cartoon. It's very, very funny. It would be revealed that Witherspoon, however, originally wasn't interested in being in a cartoon and at first turned down the role. I said, I don't want to do no cartoon, and he talked me into it. According to Witherspoon's son, J.D. Witherspoon, John said, J.D., you ever heard of this thing called the boondocks? J.D. said that when his dad asked him that, he bugged out. J.D. said, you got to take this job, and he did. Can you imagine the boondocks without Witherspoon? That too was another one of his iconic roles that almost didn't happen. Up until his passing, Witherspoon would reach a new generation of fans as a strict and over-the-top granddad, Robert Freeman, on the animated series for a total of four seasons. For John Witherspoon, it appeared that he found a lane, one that allowed him to be himself. So when he would leave us in October of 2019, it felt like we all lost our father.